Jeff Coe from Seven Load at the current web, uh, the unconference just before the next web in Amsterdam. Um, Jeff, you, you could just tell us a little bit about what you guys do, uh, for those who don't already know, uh, what your company are up to. Yep, Seven Load is a video and image sharing platform. Um, it started a couple of years ago as a social interactive way of uh, um, sharing videos, sharing images, and um, being a part of the community with other people who are like-minded and liking each other's content. Uh, the company has developed over the last, uh, especially last six months, where we're starting to aim for more of the premium content space. Premium content is usually content which has a production value, not just user generated. And in fact, some of the market or some of the areas that we've had a lot of success with in building communities and also monetizing are those groups where you see content which is not content which is on TV, but content which is of a high con quality value, but is more of a niche uh, viewership. Because with the internet, as you know, it's, it's a global phenomenon. So people in, in Spain can be watching a video which was made in Russia, or was made in Australia. So there's no, there's no sort of barriers of territories for rights or things like that. So a, a video which maybe only has 10,000 followers in Germany, if you combine that with the whole world, that might be a million followers. And an example I've used before is like someone who wants to brew beer, or some of people who like ponies, or like even, you know, golf, where you can have a, a golf lessons or a golf show, where, which is produced quite effectively, but would never be on TV. The video for the video on a platform, that fits quite well to that, because the user can come in in his own leisure and view that, and see, okay, I like my video of, you know, golf or brewing beer, and, um, and that's where, uh, the ultimate challenge is and the ultimate desire is to then bring advertising which is completely relevant into that space. So basically instead of having a McDonald's ad on the brew, brewery how to brew a beer video, you actually have a yeast ad. So there's a company out there in the world who maybe sells yeast, well they should be advertising that. Or there's a company for breathalyze yourself so they don't get pulled up by the police because it's relevant because I think the people who are watching this are probably going to drink and they're going to drive and we should be helping them. So target that group and give it the relevant advertising instead of, like I said, in a McDonald's ad. I mean, that can be, the McDonald's ad can be on the, on the, on the football World Cup because that's where they're trying to get to everyone. And uh, so this is your, we're right in saying your platform is aiming to help advertisers reach those niche markets and fit within those spaces. Who are, your, who are your sort of target client base? The t I mean, on, on, the, on the surface, the target clients are the media agencies and the ad resellers who represent the uh, ad agencies or in reality the brands themselves. Um, I do find though that that is where we have a, a, a bottleneck. That is, a, that is the struggle because media agencies, advertising agencies, they are used to buying advertising in, in a space and they understand that space. So if they buy the back end of a newspaper, they have a, a sheet which says these are the viewers of this newspaper, this is how many people distribution, this is the cost. It's been done for 20, 30, 50, 100 years. Um, it's not hard. We come along and we rock the boat because the problem is, is they say, well, media agency was, okay, uh, so I have to now go find uh, people who sell yeast. Where are they? Uh, I don't know these people because these people who sell yeast probably never use this media to sell yeast. They probably sold at, at, at events like, uh, you know, beer fests or something like that, you know, something very specific. Oh, yeah. And that's what we've done. So we've brought the specific demographic into a technology or new media space. Um, and so our challenge is making it very simple for those brands and those, not just brands, but those companies who sell those products to get to us and to use, if they need be, the media agencies and ad agencies to do that and to deploy the advertising. It's one of the uh, things that seems to occur, which is that um, educating agencies in terms of moving away, for example, moving away from reach to engagement. Yes. How do you find that? How, how does that work out? <laughs> well, as we know, reach is measurable. You know, you say, if you work for a, if you're representing a brand, you're representing a, uh, um, Let's look around. If you're representing something like a drink, you can actually go to the drink brand's market manager and go, I can get you five million eyeballs. And at the end of that campaign, you can say, here are the five million. But if you go, I can get you uh, 200,000 three-year-old children or five-year-old children who all live in Australia, um, they're going to say, well, where's the evidence? Of course. 
And that's challenging because there's privacy laws, you, you can only know so much about a user. What you can do is you can say, well, what we did was we placed this ad, like with TV, in an area of context. So we placed it in, for example, uh, uh, the uh, Transformers. So the Transformers cartoon is on, we advertise your soft drink. We know, and Transformers know, based on their research and consumer group, that that is viewed by a demographic of 10 to 15 year old boys. So we have access that market. And, 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 and that's just sort of the similar things that we have to do. We have to, to make that information more readily available and ease the, 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 the conscience of these media people when they go back to the brand to prove that what they did was the right thing. Because at the moment, you know, there's that risk that they go back and say, I put your ad on 7 load with this video and they're like, whoa, what? But you only got 100,000 views. And they go, yeah, but they were really, really quality views. And they go, well, how, how do I know that? How can you prove that? Because I need to then explain myself to the brand. And the brand's gonna go, yeah, but the other guy's got me five million views. He got me 100,000. So, you know. Yeah, it's, um, as you were saying, it's the shotgun or spray approach uh, yeah. versus targeting. Everyone says that even with, the, with YouTube at the moment. I mean, I'm not, definitely not saying anything bad about YouTube. I think it's fantastic what they've done. Uh, in fact, YouTube is suffering at its, as, because of its own success, which is, you know, you, everyone wants to watch your videos on your site, uh, and it, that's very expensive, and uh, they're not monetizing that effectively. And it's because they can't, because the problem with YouTube is, that, is, is exactly that. You go, we've got 20 million views, but my God, we have no idea who those 20 million views were. We don't even know what that is. And so the advertisers, agencies, and the brands are like, that's just too, too obscure, too risky, eh, you know, um, scary. Yeah. Don't like it. A bit dangerous. What about yourself? How did you get uh, into Seven Loads? What's, what's your history? Uh, my history is uh, I actually, in the, uh, in the early days uh, of my life, when I was at university, I started a, a company trying to sell music via the internet, which was in the middle to late 90s, which was well before everyone else was doing it, stupidly enough, because that, even today that's a challenge. So I was doing it when I thought it wouldn't be, which is trying to get people to buy an MP3 file, which is brand new, no one had ever heard of it, didn't know what to do with it. Um, as you can imagine, people wanted to do that, the user wanted to do that, but licenses were impossible to get. Hence the record labels, and that hasn't changed much. Um, after I did that, I, uh, I realized that I should be getting more into an, an environment where I could control the usage, and that was a mobile telephone. That was when the mobile telephone just suddenly came on. Yeah, and then I was about uh, around 2000, 2001, where color screens and uh, um, polyphonics. So I started getting into, yeah, I started a mobile aggregation company. Uh, well, I was a, one of the early guys on board in Australia, and we developed that. Um, and uh, yeah, did that for many years in fact. Rode the wave, uh, made a lot of money, had a lot of fun. Uh, and, but yeah, everything like that, all good things come to an end. That yeah. started to get to the end of its career uh, quite a few years back. And so I thought I wanted to do something a little more challenging. And uh, Seven Load was doing some very interesting things, like I said, in that space of very early when I joined, which was trying to bring that relevant content to the relevant users. And I thought, you know, I should get a, be a part of that. And so I came on board to help them do that internationally because they're a jammer based company and uh, my role is to help them do that internationally but it's also seen me help them also in Germany with developing the strategies and uh, um, yeah, understanding the technologies and getting this technology to work with uh, all the different types of content. Okay, and things for the future from 7 Load? What do we, uh, but obviously things that you can say. Yeah, the, the future is, like I said, very much around uh, bringing the parties together. Um, it's a little bit like we, we, we have the usage, we know people want to see this, the content that we have, um, and it's communicating that effectively and accurately to the ones who are paying, which are the advertisers, um, so that everyone is going to be happy and everyone sees the value. Because we believe as well, if they see the value, they're going to force up the CPM or force up the CPA or whatever way you monetize that. And so that will allow us to then even build our business even more. Instead of you know selling out our, our, our uh, ad inventory at a very cheap rate because of the fact that people just aren't sure or aren't educated around our uh, users. And so my final question is, uh, well, how do you guys make money off, uh, off the platform? Well, it's exactly that, which is at the moment we're making money because we're making money with a combination of uh, CPM, CPA, uh, CPC, which is all the different forms of uh, you know, click per, uh, cost per click or click cost per mil. Um, 
And also we're even doing that where there's certain types of content which are so high value that uh, users come in and they maybe see some clips or promotional video for free and they want more so therefore they can then pay as a pay-per-use model as well. So if they really can't wait to see the newest or the entire South Park, then they're going to pay for it. And, and people are willing to also do that. So at the moment, we're making money from a combination of things. And we believe in the future, it's going to be even, even in a higher degree of that development, which is some cases, things are going to be free, some things are going to be subscription, and some things are going to be pay-per-use because there's a different flexibility of, and desire to pay depending on the type of content there is. Okay, excellent. So great. All right, Jeff, thanks. thanks a lot for your time. No problem, thank you. Cheers.